Orlando and welcome back to my channel, the best place to be to discover exactly how your thoughts and your emotions are affecting your whole health and not just your health, but your life as well. Hi, I'm Andrew Coulter and this week I'm going to talk about the stomach flu. Now, there is no such thing as the stomach flu. I'm sorry, I just have to say it. My kids know me so well over the years that I used to rant about this all the time because Again, being a health practitioner, I'm very clear on what are we addressing, what are we treating, and how do we treat it. When you don't know, you can't really have an answer. And when people come into the house, the kids would always bring a friend over and they'd be like, oh, I had a stomach flu yesterday. My kids would be like, oh, and look over at me like, oh, shit, here we go. And so I would do my little spiel that there is no such thing as stomach flu. Influenza is an upper respiratory bronchial issue. The stomach is a whole other ballgame. And yes, there are things that create um, stomach disturbances, if you will. I guess it's easy to say, oh, I had the stomach flu, because it's an easy way to say I had an upset stomach or a severe upset stomach, because really that's what it is. But there are, you know, either viruses or bacteria that cause it. And it is a gastric disturbance absolutely can cause just nausea or vomiting or diarrhea and or both. And generally, it's one of two things. So either it's food poisoning, and if it's food poisoning, then there are, you know, ways that you can help your body to recover faster from food poisoning. And there are ways to avoid that. So, of course, all the practices of, you know, clean food eating. And, you know, my daughter, in fact, the other week, called me and she's like, oh, I feel really horrible. I got a headache, my stomach's upset. Like, I don't know what's going on. And we talked a bit about it. She was, I said, well, have you eaten something you shouldn't? And she was like, well, I did eat some seafood that had been in the fridge for five days. I'm like, oh my God, don't eat seafood if it's any older than 24 hours. It's just not worth the risk. Chicken is another one up there and bad food prep practices, you know, raw meats and eggs and things. There is, a, we can even get food poisoning from, you know, lettuce and greenery because, you know, those organisms get onto it in the delivery system that we have. It's not always 100%. So if you have food poisoning, you know, there are steps you can do to help your body overcome that. And so what I would say for food poisoning is, of course, digestive enzymes, look at things to help with the nausea and the vomiting, like ginger and, you know, lemon and ginger tea, you know, doing healthy probiotics to boost up your system and prebiotics to help your digestive system and really keep things simple, you know, lots of fluids and really just rest, you're going to have to get over it. But to not get it, you do need to make sure you're doing proper preparation with your food and not eating things you shouldn't be eating, like five-day-old seafood. But if it's not food poisoning, which really is one of the biggest reasons for stomach flu every year, if it's not, then it's a viral. And there are viruses that do cause what we call the stomach flu. And it happens often in the fall. So fall, late fall, in the changing of the weather, you know, the season is cold and damp, at least here in Ontario, this kind of real strong shift in the weather can trigger viruses. And if it's a virus, then you're going to have to work through that, which, again, you know, there are great tools that I have, and I'll put links below to, number one, prevent it, and to help you get through it in the best possible way. But let's first look at what could be causing you to be susceptible to the stomach flu or a virus. And oftentimes, as you know me, it's a state of mind. So one of the biggest things that I see with flu, not stomach flu, but the bronchial, bronchial flu is in the fall, you see all the advertisements for get your flu vaccine, the flu season's coming, oh my God, look out, you're all gonna die. So we all get wrapped up in this, oh my God, I have to do something, what if I, what if I get it all? So fear is a huge suppressant of the immune system. And they know that, which is why they ramp up these um, ad campaigns to scare you into going out and getting your flu vaccine. Now, I have a safer, much more effective alternative. Like I said, there's a link below for my immunity kit. However, 
this is gastric viral stuff. Now the same kit deals with gastric stuff because just like bronchi bronchial flu, gastric disturbances and bacterial, they all are more prone when your immunity is down. So if you're stressed and if you're harboring a ton of emotional baggage and you're just not dealing with it, then your immune system is going to be depleted. If you're eating improperly, there's so many variables with your immune system. Of course, if you're fighting other illnesses, if you have a comprised immune system already, then you're more susceptible already. Absolutely. And of course, I encourage you to do prevention, which is doing your own due diligence, taking care of your health, not just going, well, I hope this jab does it all. No. It's not going to do it all. You, it, it's like a diabetic saying, well, I just keep on taking the insulin and then I can eat this shitty, crappy, sugary food and then I just take more insulin. I just keep balancing out this way. Oh my God, I don't understand. <laughs> I really don't. Take a little ownership of your health, please. And so with stomach viruses, it's important to first look at the mental emotional load. So in the fall, when the weather's changing, boost up your immune system with, you know, probiotics and vitamin D and take more antioxidants and then look at your level of stress. Look at your emotional baggage. Is there deep grief issues that you haven't looked at? Are you carrying around a bunch of stress, emotional, mental stress that you haven't dealt with? That affects your immune system as well. So you have to balance both sides of the scale. And it doesn't matter which one's off. And if they're both completely out of kilter, then of course you're going to be susceptible to any kind of infection. And so what I'm saying this week is, you know, not just to get over the stomach flu, but any kind of illness, you need to take a little ownership of your health. And along with that ownership, you know, Make sure you get really good rest. And if you're not sleeping well, start looking at the reasons why you're not sleeping well. Again, I have a sleep kit. You can go to my website and check that one out and find out all the different ways that you can improve your sleep. Because there's a bazillion and one reasons why we're not sleeping well. Along with sleep, making sure your nutrients are good. So when people, if you're feeling like you're coming down with something, my golden rules to prevent it as much as possible is to get really good sleep, drink lots of really good fluids, healthy fluids like broths and good lots of water, lemon water, um, you know, teas that are healthy, herbal teas, take some herbs that will boost your immune system, take some remedies like in my kit, take probiotics to boost up your immune system, all of these are useful tools that you can use to make sure that you can prevent and or get over it quicker, not let it take a good foothold. But also avoid alcohol, avoid sugar, avoid overprocessed crappy food because those things repress and suppress your immune system as well. And then after that, look at the mental and emotional component. And if there's some emotional baggage that you're just not working through properly, then take some time to work through it. And if you need some help with that, just reach out. I'm here. That's what I do. And I'm happy to help. So hopefully this gives you some good tips on how to not only just prevent the stomach flu, but all flus and viruses as well and get you through the crappy weather season as best as possible and with as much health as possible on every level. That's what it's all about. So thank you so much for joining me this week. Week, if you have any questions or concerns, or you want, you know, you want me to talk about something else, post something below or reach out to me. I'm happy to be here for you. So for the rest of this week, remember: be authentic, be empowered, and own it completely. Bye.